Room 442 is brought to you by No Star Bets. That's a win. All right, before we get to today's match day one of the Champions League, we have to quickly mention a certain parlay that a certain James Sharman and Albert Vatanian threw some Muller down on yesterday. Uh-huh. Four-game parlay, everything's going great. 95th minute, we're up, and then Atletico Madrid concede a goal. To a goalkeeper! What a header, by the way. But that's one of the all-time bad beats. We were doing well that day, we're too. We are doing so We well. won some bets. And letting you know, you mentioned the other day, highest paid manager in the world, Diego Simeone. Yep. You let that happen. I mean, it's Atletico in Europe, right? Usually one nil is safe. Oh, it's a right? lock. It's, it's a, a lock, lock of all locks. It's a lock. I know. Ninety fifth for the goalkeeper to score for Lazio. I mean, that's my last parlay I'm ever doing until today. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm not betting today. <laughs> I I'm literally not just did one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't learn. No, neither do I. Oh, that was just gut wrenching. You're I'm in the not vicious cycle it. right now of, vicious of betting football. Still. Big day today. Yes. Some big games. Again, we're going to give you one reason to watch each and every match. Starting in Group A, Copenhagen, Galatasaray. I don't know if many people actually want to watch this game, but <laughs> you should. Just to tune in to see the gang of players that they have. Sharms, look at this front four, okay? Wilfred Zaha, remember him? Dries Mertens, Hakim Ziyech, Mauro Icardi. That's their it's front pretty four. pretty good. It's not bad, right? I think they're going to cause some problems in this group. Icardi's banging in goals. He has eight goals in his last six games. They're playing in Turkey. Welcome to hell. One of the most difficult stadiums to play in. So, mm-hmm. listen, tune in just to watch those players. But I think Galatasaray can actually surprise this group. I can't believe Will Saha ends up at Galatasaray. After all the rumors for so many years oh. about where he's going. Went to United for a while. Didn't work out. Back to Palace. He ended up at Galatasaray. I hope it works out for them. Because this group is interesting. Um, the next match goes Bayern Munich hosting Manchester United. Now, obviously, one of the great fixtures in world football traditionally not so much this year if i'm galatasaray i'm thinking man united can be had here um so the, the story here you would think it'd be harry kane right everyone's telling us that it is. yeah but i don't think it is i, I think it's got to still be united and, and on the cusp of, of an absolute all-out crisis there um it's been just a, a terrible season so far they're actually just three points worse off than this time last year mm. now if you remember they actually continued last year and they fell into crisis the next month. Then they found themselves. So maybe that will happen again. Um, but sitting right now in 13th, there's no energy in that team. There's no movement on the pitch. This is not United. They're missing, of course, Sancho. They're missing Anthony. No wide players whatsoever. They've got to find a way to get a point against Bayern Munich. They have to. Otherwise, this thing's going to descend pretty quickly. I want to see Hoyland. He plays today. Mm. He played um, uh, 60 minutes on the weekend. Looked really good. Then came off. So that's one to watch. So, yeah, Harry Kane obviously is the marquee name here. And I want to see him against the team we thought he'd be joining for a long, long time. But I still think it's United. And, and just how, how slippery is that slope they're slipping down right now? This should be dubbed, right, as two European giants going head-to-head. The must-see match. And it really isn't. No. Like, it is must-see because everything you mentioned there, you know, especially Harry Kane. But, I mean, United have, have really fallen off. Big time. And to think, you know, based on what they did last season, it seemed, it, it, we thought that things were turning around and it's just, we're back to square one. I'll, I'll just, you know, um, repeat myself though. Last year, they struggled mightily in the first month of the season, month, six weeks of the season, ah, remember? Yes, they did. And they did bounce back right. to qualify for Europe, for the Champions League, right? So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, to Group B now, Bernie. Mm-hmm. Arsenal, PSV. I mean, there, there's tons to watch here. I think one being... You know, Arsenal back in the Champions League. It's been six and a half years. The last time a Champions League game was played at the Emirates, who did they play, James Sharman? A little trivia. The last time a Champions League game was played at the at Emirates? At the Emirates. Barcelona. Bayern Munich. Oh, 5-1. Remember that 10-2? Oh, yes. When Wenger was in charge? So yes. it's been a long time. So obviously, you know, uh, Arsenal fans are going to be excited for this game. And I think this is going to be probably the most entertaining match today. There's tons of goals here. PSV look fantastic. They haven't lost in the area of A's at all. 14 goals, one goal conceded. There's history between these two sides. PSV knocked Arsenal out of the Europa League last year. You know, Arsenal have, have bulked up their squad with Declan Rice in the midfield. Um, I mean, now they're playing, going back to a back four, the similar system that uh, Arteta used last season. And it seems to be the best system, I think, for Arsenal. And uh, there's a bit of an issue, at least I have, at the back for Arsenal with their keepers. The chopping and changing of Ramsdale and David Raya. Who's the number one? Is Ar- it chopping and changing yet? It's been one change so Well, far. Arteta said he's going to continue doing it. So it is going to be that. And I think that that's hard to settle, uh, you know, your defense when you're 
when you're changing your keeper week in and week out, what is especially this, in a NHL like one A and one B goaltenders. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out. I saw a report that. Ramsdale is being linked to Real Madrid. Oh, just, who, who knows about these yeah, things? But anyway, I, I think this really can be the most exciting match. I see goals here. So the, 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 the main reason to watch this game is Arsenal back in the Champions League? Yes. Yeah? I think that's the one. Okay. I, I like that. Um, Sevilla lens. Two desperate teams. Lens dead last in France right now. Sevilla defending champions of the Europa League. Not defending because they can't defend it. They're in the Europa League <laughs> yes. champions, of course. But they were really poor last year. Really poor again this year. The, the reason to watch this is Sergio Ramos back in the Champions League for the team where he started it all in right. Sevilla. Obviously a legend with Real Madrid. Didn't really work out a PSG for him. Um, some fans are, are not quite sure about this signing. But listen, um, Sevilla needs a good story. Right, and maybe it's going to be their veteran leader, centre back coming back and leading them back to where they should be because it's been a really, really poor couple of years, except for the European excursions. That that's the reason I think is why um, I'm picking Sergio Ramos and Sevilla to watch this game. But listen, let's be honest, uh, PSV Arsenal is the reason to watch Group B today. I think. Yeah. Hashtag nostalgia, right? Travis? Yeah, I like a bit of nostalgia. Yeah, I like it too. I'm I, old. I watched him go to uh, meet up with his teammates in Sevilla. He's crying and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Even though sometimes he's a bit of a... Sometimes? I'm not going to say it, but you know yeah. what I'm talking about. But okay. every team wants him. Uh, next game, Real Madrid, Union Berlin. One reason. Hey, Jude. Jude Bellingham. Dude, talk about a player who's absolutely on fire. Five goals and five appearances for Real Madrid. And it's the first time he's playing under the lights, Champions League, at the Bernabeu for Real Madrid. I mean, you know, obviously being here... We don't get to watch a ton of La Liga. It's it's harder to, to find in Canada than it is to watch, you know, the Premier League or even the Champions League. So now you get a chance to see this guy who's been one of the best players in world football, not just in Spain, in world football, uh, play against Union Berlin in a game where Real Madrid should completely dominate. And I think he'll be at the forefront of everything. Yeah, I mean, he's fast becoming one of the faces of world football, isn't he? He is, this yeah. season. He needed that move to a super club, right? Respect to Borussia Dortmund. He, he was great there. Although at times he rubbed his teammates the wrong way, if you re believe the reports and rumors. You know, he, he loves to be the big man on the big stage, and there's no bigger stage than the Bernabeu mm -hmm. in the Champions League, right? So that's that's a good one. Um, Braga Napoli. Listen, you, you just told me Braga's a pretty good team, right? So don't rule them out. But Napoli win this in two in the league, right? They were so dominant last year in the Italian Serie A. It's been a bit of a slower start under Rudy Garcia, and he's called his team out. He said they looked, they lacked um, determination on the weekend, right? Basically questioning their, their desire and their heart. I want to see how this team responds to that kind of criticism. Um, obviously, we know Victor Osman last year, five goals in the Champions League, fifth best scorer in the Champions League, was great. I want to see Napoli rise to where we know they can be because they were so incredible last season. Haven't quite seen it thus far mm -hmm. this campaign. So that's the reason why I'm watching that one. Let's move on to Group D. Another player, 35-year-old Angel Di Maria. This is Benfica against Salzburg. Everyone thought, including myself, I'm like, this is an older player who's going to Portugal for the rest of his career. And um, that's definitely not the case. Six goals, two assists already. He's been one of Benfica's best player. Incredible performance against Porto in the Super Tasa final. Scored a goal. I believe he had an assist in that game. I was there. Uh you were at that game. I was at that game. Right. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Right. Second so, half. You should be talking about this game. You, you're, you're, you're a Benfica <laughs> I'm a Benfica fan. Benfica these days, you're right? Benfica, yeah, exactly. exactly. But yeah, yeah, listen, I don't know what's going on with these Argentinian players. They win the World Cup, and all of a sudden, they're all the best players in the world again. Yeah. Messi, Di Maria, Altamendi looks great. Julian Alvarez is scoring goals yesterday for Manchester City. But this is just a great story, I think. 35-year-old Angel Di Maria back to a team, uh, essentially, where he started in Europe. And he's going to be playing for them in the in the Champions League. And I think Benfica have a pretty good shot of coming out of this group. They absolutely do. Yeah, I mean, listen, last year looked really good in the Champions League too, of course, getting out of the, the group phase. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a, a good team. Lost some good players in the offseason, of course, Ramos in particular. But, uh, no, they're, they're a good team. Sociedad into Milan is a mm -hmm. really intriguing one. Into Milan is the reason to watch this right now. Um, they just smashed AC Milan 5-1. 13 goals, one against all campaign in the Serie A. Tops of the table. Are they for real? Um, I look at Marcus Turam, who's arrived finally to Inter Milan after being rumored for, what, two or three years uh, from Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's been great so far this year. Two goals, two assists. Um, he's really filling that hole that was left when Lukaku left. Mm. So can Turam, he's 26 now. He's not a kid, but obviously um, a big player for France internationally. Can he rise and become one of those top strikers in world football? I want to see this on the biggest stage. So, uh, you know, will that translate now to the Champions League? He hasn't played there for a couple of years, Turan, but 
I still think Inter Milan are, are, are a solid team, a, a great team, and I want to see the Serie A do well. I Scored really do. a beauty against uh, AC Milan too, and that Milan derby. They just own that game. They really do. I mean, you don't see often that that derby being owned by one particular team. The tight affairs usually, mm-hmm. but Inter Milan looked just fantastic. So that is match day one concluding for you on this Wednesday. Uh, good luck if you if you sprinkle a little money on a parlay <laughs> like myself. I need the luck after what happened yesterday. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.